I'm Grayson Ottaway. Welcome back. This is Marvelous Videos. Apollo, Lovecraftian story explored. It's no surprise that Zeus's sister wife, Hera, was jealous of the amorous relationships he shared with other women, which was something that left Hera so enraged that she had posed as a mortal enemy of all of Zeus's consorts and their children. Written by Eric Von Wodka and illustrated by Douglas A. Seroy, the comic Apollo retells this famous story with a Lovecraftian twist. Even if you have a passing knowledge of H.P. Lovecraft's work, you would be well aware of what a magnificent science fiction and fantasy writer he was. His work has continued to inspire numerous films, novels and comics. Likewise, the subject of today's video is the one-issue comic Apollo, which centers around Hera's hate for Zeus's children with Leto, and how Hera sends the terrifying monster Cthulhu after the innocent children. Let's begin, shall we? Before we get into our explanation, a very little request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to this channel. Little click for you, but for us, means a whole lot. Thank you. Let's get into it. One, the unleashing of Cthulhu. The story begins in ancient Greece with Hera summoning Cthulhu, a monster like no other. The beast had risen from the depths of Tartarus, a gloomy and deep place that knew nothing but suffering and torment and housed the most terrifying of creatures. Cthulhu was a winged creature with an octopus-like head, which itself measured thousands of feet. Hera summoned this otherworldly abomination because she had recently learned about Zeus's infidelity and wanted to slay the woman and her children. As Cthulhu began its pursuit, it destroyed everything that stood in its path. However, a cloaked woman who had witnessed the destruction that Cthulhu had caused managed to sneak past him. She rode and rode through the moonlit water, leaving behind the echoes of otherworldly horror. The cloaked woman reached a village that was celebrating the 18th birthday of the twins, Apollo and Artemis. The entire village had gathered to participate in singing and dancing. Everyone was happy, except Apollo, who had grown tired of living the same adventureless life every day. He asked his sister Artemis, don't you wish you could leave our parents' farm and travel beyond the land and the sea? Before Artemis could respond, the room fell silent as Leto appeared in the room with her hunting dog and loot. She asked the villagers to halt their celebrations, for a great danger was heading their way. She goes on to say, Great danger comes this way. The gods and monsters are angry and will be vengeful. However, she claimed that if the village folk listened to the story she had brought from afar as a gift to the birthday twins, they might just be able to save their village and everyone who lived in it. Although the other people believed it to be horse crap, Apollo seemed interested in what the woman had to say. Please entertain us with your tale of gods, monsters and magic. Convince us your story is true. 2. Leto's Story Leto begins by telling Apollo and the others about Cthulhu and how and why it was released from the depths of the underworld. According to Leto, many years ago, Zeus fell in love with a lady named Leto. The two of them were spending some personal time on Mount Olympus, but Zeus's sister wife Hera found them. Infuriated with jealousy, she threatened to kill Leto and would have succeeded had it not been for Zeus, whose heart was filled with love and shame. He took Leto to a cave which led far into the earth, where Zeus's brother Hades resided. Furthermore, he brought her a hunting dog named Milius and a nursemaid named Adara, who was to play the lute and help Leto calm her mind. Lastly, Zeus gave Leto the Book of the Dead, which is famous in Lovecraft's world as the Necronomicon. Zeus tells her that the book belonged to Hades and it would help her reach the island of Dalos, where neither Hera nor the creatures would be able to find Leto. 
but he also warned her that the flesh-bound book would claim someone's life every time Leto would seek the book's help. And it wasn't before long that the ground trembled beneath Leto's feet and Adara alerted Leto about the impending arrival of a monster. In a last-ditch attempt, Leto used the Necronomicon or the Book of the Dead and a blinding green light pulsed with a sonic heartbeat under the sea, and the very next moment, Adara's body mysteriously turned dust. Leto could not help but blame herself for this loss, but then Zeus had already mentioned that this would happen. However, Poseidon, the god of the sea, had sensed the sonic beat and sent a dolphin to carry Leto and her dog to the island of Dalos. Indeed, the book helped poor Leto, but she had to pay a great price for it. This particular panel, with Leto riding a dolphin, looks absolutely dreamlike and yet believable. Nevertheless, Leto and her hunting dog Malias ended up on the shore and had a strange realization. On the island of Dalos, time moved 18 times slower than the rest of the world, meaning that one day on Dalos would be equal to 18 days anywhere else. As days turned to nights, and the nights turned to days, Leto realized that she was pregnant with Zeus's child. But she was all alone on the island, who was to deliver her child. That's when Leto rallied the strength to do the impossible. She had resolved that she would deliver her own child, but that was not her only cause of concern. A giant python had been closely watching Leto and her every move. The more Leto's contractions increased, the closer the python came. When she was in her most vulnerable and weak stage, the python attacked Leto. Fortunately for her, Milius, the hunting dog, protected her mistress. The python had to back off and it slithered away into the forest. Leto gave birth to a daughter, whom she named Artemis, but that was not it. Leto was carrying another child within her. After several hours of labor, she gave birth to a son who was called Apollo. So Leto had given birth to twins, but she knew that she alone would not be able to secure a healthy and prosperous future for her children on that deserted island, but neither did she wish to abandon her children. Finding herself stuck between a rock and a hard place, Leto decided to travel to the Greek mainland in a makeshift raft. Once there, she left the infant children at the doors of a humble farmer couple. On her way back to the island of Dalos, Leto and Milius encountered Carthulu, and the giant beast saw Leto's raft. Leto was close enough though to the island of Dalos and managed to reach the shores. Just as she set foot on the island, Carthulu lost sight of Leto and retracted back into the depths of the ocean. Leto then goes on to tell Apollo, separated from their real mother, the two children grew happily in their foster parents' care. 18 years later, she had returned to her children. However, Leto had to wait only for a year because time moved slower on Dalos, remember? Leto told her children and the others that the monsters and gods were real and a horrifying creature was coming for the village. The only way to protect themselves was by finding the weapons of the Elder Gods, which remained frozen and hidden on the top of a mountain. While the villagers mocked Leto for her story, Artemis and Apollo were cynical. They did not outrightly discard whatever Leto had to say, but they didn't even believe her immediately. However, by the next morning, Leto had managed to convince Macedon, the village's strongest guide, and Macedon had assembled a posse of ten other men who were to join forces and look for the weapons of the Elder Gods. But Apollo and Artemis were still unsure if this mysterious lady was their mother and if the gods and the monsters indeed existed. The kids asked their parents if they could join Leto's adventure. The foster parents gave Apollo and Artemis the green signal, but the kids had no idea what kind of a mess that they were getting into. Their road was going to be filled with various hurdles, but then a diamond doesn't begin its journey polished and shining. Apollo and Artemis needed to learn their lessons before they would be hailed as gods. 3. Cannibals and Giants 
Leto, Macedon, Apollo, Artemis, and the others began their arduous journey, which proved to be a challenging one from the first leg itself. During their climb, they suffered the devastation caused by a landslide. Macedon managed to save most of the people, but a few lost their lives to their fall. Apollo, whom Leto had given her loot, played a funeral song, while Artemis was questioning Leto why it was that gods did not save the men who had recently lost their lives. Leto remained silent, knowing that gods were not the epitome of goodness and kindness that mortals often considered them to be. The group went further up the mountain, and the terrain started to become rougher. But worse than the terrain was a tribe of cannibals who attacked the party. The crazed, hungry beasts ripped the group apart one by one, and the blood of the fallen turned the icy white ground red. The tribe had overpowered the men, and everyone would have perished had it not been for Leto who found an icy tomb to hide in. Leto, Macedon, and the two teenagers entered the ancient tomb, which was dark and cold. Here, Leto exclaimed that their search was over. She was pointing at two silver bows and a golden chariot that was to be carried by four horses who breathed fire. But their weapons were being protected by the Chimera, a monster that would make even the bravest of men wet their pants. The Chimera was a ferocious beast with three heads. The central one was that of a grim-eyed lion, the right one belonged to a dragon, and the one on the left was a goat with fiery breath. Macedon started fighting the Chimera and almost severed the dragon's head, but he was just a human and the Chimera a mythological monstrosity. As a last measure, Leto resorted to using the Book of the Dead. She recited a section from the book and almost immediately, the Chimera's soul was ripped and sent to Hades in the underworld. Unfortunately though, the Book of the Dead took one more soul, Macedon's, who turned to dust. Using a strange liquid, Leto melted the ice wall behind which the weapons remained. She took her children and got on the chariot. The magical horses broke out of the tomb and flew higher and higher into the sky. The winged horses brought Leto and her children back to their village. The following morning, Apollo woke before everyone else and he left with Leto on the golden chariot to find and slay the giant python who had tried to kill his mother. Although he initially did not believe that Leto's story was legitimate, he was now sure of the troubles and pain Leto had endured bringing him and his twin sister into the world. Apollo fought, pursued and hunted the python, decapitating its head. But the entire sequence of events was being closely observed by a raven that belonged to Hera, the jealous queen of gods. When Hera heard this news, she was left enraged beyond measure. Not only was a child of Zeus living and breathing, but he had also killed her python. She struck back by sending her giant named Titius to Apollo and Artemis's village. Titius was wreaking his havoc on the poor villagers, but they now had two heroic defenders. But the mighty teenage warriors could only stall the giant and were failing to defeat him. In the end, Leto used her Book of the Dead and read another passage, which brought Zeus into the fold of things. Zeus grabbed Titius and hurled him into the depths of Tartarus. There he lay for several years while the vultures feasted on his innards every day. When Hera heard that another one of her warriors had fallen, she sent Cthulhu to kill Leto and everyone who stood by her side. Cthulhu presented himself as a behemoth beast and the battle commenced at sunrise. The twins though were now well armed to defend themselves and stood their ground against Cthulhu for the better part of the day. They flew on their golden chariot and rained the Cthulhu with deadly magical arrows. But Cthulhu was unstoppable, and it managed to reach the island, and the monster killed Leto. Knowing that the task was completed and revenge taken, Hera made her presence known under the full moon's light. But a plea from the children shocked her. 
They said, let us offer our own lives instead of those who have been lost. Gods, monsters and magic may be a part of reality, but nothing has ever been so cruel as your vengeance. Even though she had been betrayed and pained by her husband, Hera couldn't destroy the sacred love that resided in the hearts of these children. She resurrected Leto and asked Artemis and Apollo's forgiveness, for she had been blinded by jealousy and rage. As a reward, Hera bestowed unto Apollo the charge of the god of the sun and music, while Artemis was made goddess of the hunt and the moon. Both children had been given immortal roles. <laughs> 4. Marvelous Verdict in the end, the children had taught the queen of the gods what it was to act in a godly fashion. They had taught her that rage and revenge are all but mortal behavior and do not suit gods and goddesses. I'm pretty sure that you may have heard or read about the story of Apollo and Artemis, but this comic retold it from a Lovecraftian perspective, and horror fans must give it a read. Albeit, I must say that Cthulhu could have been handled better than a pawn at Hera's hand. Fans of Lovecraft know that this monstrous creation was more evil and cunning than all the demons combined. Also, it is more of a picture book than a comic because of the picturized prose story. Having said that, Apollo is a very good comic book, if not exceptional. If you've enjoyed today's content, don't forget to leave a like and please subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and please be safe. Thank you.